Welcome, friends, to Beyond the Crucible, the podcast that dares to talk about setback and failure, but not so we can commiserate. It's so we can elevate. I'm Gary Schneeberger, the co-host of the show, and our mission today is to offer you the hope that your crucible experiences, those tragedies and challenges you faced or are facing right now, don't define you. They refine you. They did not happen to you. They happened for you. And I don't know many people, let's be honest, I don't know anybody, uh, I think, who knows that better than the founder of Beyond the Crucible, the host of this podcast, and my friend Warwick Fairfax. Warwick, this is going to be a great discussion because it's based, um, it's one of the ones we do every month, it's based on one of the the blogs, your most recent blog at beyondthecrucible.com, and I know you care a great deal about it. So I think we'll have a good conversation here. Absolutely looking forward to it. And you're right. I, I do care about this subject matter. I mean, I care about everything that we do, but <laughs> right. Right. But this, this one, one. <laughs> yeah, this one is, is, uh, is important to you. And, and this one folks mm. is, um, uh, it, it's a blog at beyond the crucible.com It's called how to find the right mentor, which is funny because we usually agonize over titles. Uh, what are we going to call it? We're going to do it. And, and Warwick just kind of wrote that as a placeholder. And we all were like, that's really good. It's direct. It's simple. <laughs> Let's not change anything. So um, sometimes, uh, you know, uh, trying to be clever uh, gets in the way of, of, of being concise and, 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 and getting the meaning across. And Warwick did it. So the, the, the blog is called How to Find the Right Mentor. And just to kind of level set what we're going to talk about, um, you know, leaders want to grow and they want to advance in their careers. Individuals want to grow and, and advance in their lives as well. Um, as human beings. And one of the tools we can use to do that, that we've talked about a few times, but not in the detail that we're going to talk about today, is the subject of mentors. Um, uh, They can be one way to accelerate our learning and potentially accelerate the process of becoming who we want to be. It's not, caveat, it's not a cure-all for all of our career or life challenges, but it can certainly be helpful. And um, the the next line that Warwick wrote, really summarizes why he did this he uh th- this this blog and why we're doing this podcast he's had experience with mentors check and he's had some that were very good and some that were perhaps not so helpful to his uh his progression so that's kind of what we're going to talk about and and, and we want to help you know what it is you can look for uh what you should plan for what you should should aim for when uh, you look for a mentor. So um, I'll start, Warwick, by just asking you, you know, what about this subject, especially now, just kind of dropped in your mind as, yep, this is good to write a blog about. Why is this right now so so critical, uh, so important, so top of mind for you? Yeah, the subject of mentoring, it's so, certainly something I care a lot about. As I've been reflecting over the last year, I've uh, had a number of uh, coaching engagements, which Coaching and mentoring is not quite the same. In coaching, you don't really give any advice. You, you know, ask good questions, hopefully. At least that's the goal. And, you know, I'm a International Coach Federation certified coach. But in mentoring, um, there's giving advice, there's asking questions, but it's, um, it's a bit different. Uh, and we'll, you know, outline just some of the differences. Certainly you want a mentor that you feel like knows more than you do in a particular field. And uh, coaching is a bit different that way. But um, part of it is um, I've had a number of folks, certainly uh, years ago uh, when I was younger and in my newspaper days and then in the aftermath as I was trying to figure out what do I do with my life now and wasn't in too good a shape, you know, after the 150-year-old $2.25 billion takeover, which, you know, ended in late 1990, I had a number of mentors that, that cared a lot about me and, you know, were wonderful human beings. But there is a tendency with mentors to want to tell you what to do, to give you the answers. And it comes, at least in my case, from a very good heart, a very good place. But it wasn't always that helpful. I mean, certainly, you you tell me what to do, it's not going to be that helpful to me. You ask me good questions, then that starts to open up my mind and my heart. And it's incredibly interesting. Um, I have. Like in the week that we're recording this, right? Earlier this week, um, I encountered, I, I, I talked to an old journalism mentor of, of mine, one of the two greatest journalism, um, you know, mentors of my of my newspaper career, 
And I hadn't talked to him in 30 years, Warwick. And, and when I got on the phone with him, just the sound of his voice, and part of that is he's from North Texas, so the sound of his voice has a very, uh, a very distinct ring to it. But just hearing him, you know, just hearing him talk about, he was helping with, he was helping me with a project, connecting me to some local people where he lives now. And it was, you know, that emotion when, when a mentorship goes right, and we'll talk more about this as we go on, but as when, when someone mentors you well, and you learn from that and you grow from that and, and you develop in your career from that, uh, the memories uh, are, are eternal. Uh, I have not talked to this man, Carol Wilson. Carol, if you're listening, thank you. Uh, I haven't talked to Carol in uh, in 30 years. We've communicated in social media and things, but I've not heard his voice. And hearing his voice just felt like, you know, felt a little like home. It felt a little like what it was when he was he was offering me counsel and wisdom and asking good questions of me in the newsroom. So um, it just, you know, it's one of those one of those coincidences that happens, right? We're going to do a, uh, a a podcast on mentoring. I talked to one of my uh, greatest mentors the same week. So, um, so if you're wondering, folks, based on what Warwick said and what I've said, what does it, what should you be looking for in a mentor? That's what this blog, um, How to Find the Right Mentor at BeyondTheCrucible.com that Warwick wrote is all about. Uh, and it is, this will shock all of you who have who have watched or listened <laughs> to previous episodes uh, about the blog, it will shock you to know that there are seven points in this blog. That's that's where it's go to number. Um, and it would, um, it would seem I don't like six, eight seems too many. So who knows? Maybe it'll change one day. But you know, we'll see. <laughs> that's good, and 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 they're all good, solid, strong points, folks. So uh -huh. I'm not making fun of it. It's just kind of interesting that that's what the, the way is. they always turn out, and, and no one's surprised uh -huh. by it. So let's get into the uh, those points, Warwick. Number one, as you start looking to find the right mentor, number one is we have to be ready. What does that mean? What does it mean to be ready to be mentored? Yeah, you know. It's one thing to get good advice and we'll define what that looks like and good questions. But if we're not ready, nobody can help us. If we feel like, look, I'm an expert. There's nothing in the world that I don't know. I know everything. I'm the font of all knowledge. I've learned everything that there is to learn. Uh, you know, maybe you've read every book that's ever been written and listened to every, watched every documentary. And, you know, you're just a genius. You're, Albert Einstein, you know, you're uh, all these folks all rolled into one and you don't know, you, you know everything. Well, then, yes, maybe mentoring is not for you, but let's say you're human, uh, you know, <laughs> yes. then uh, let's make that assumption. Uh, then maybe you don't know everything. So you've got to first start from a perspective of uh, humility that um, you've got to have a sense that, you know what, I want to grow. I can get to another level in my career and my life, and I'd like people to uh, to help me get there. And I'm open I'm open to advice, the right kind of advice and the right kind of uh, mentor. So basically, if we're not ready, if we don't want to grow, if we're not open to listening to others, then don't bother. You know, right. just don't waste your time, and certainly don't waste other people. So before you can be helped. You have to want to be helped. You have to be ready. That's really the starting point. And it's not only that you have to be ready, like in a vacuum. In other words, you don't. Have, it, hmm. Many times you can discover that you're ready by the interactions you have with other people who may be mentors, who may be someone who can be a mentor to you. Right? I mean, as you're going through that 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 colleague, that friend, that person that you encounter who seems to, you know know some things you'd like to know, that can be the impetus, can't it, for um, for being ready. Sometimes you can go into it not necessarily thinking you're ready, but then you encounter some people and all of a sudden you're like, I think I'm ready. So that's that's one way to get ready. It's not a solo pursuit all the time necessarily, is it? Well, no. And if you're somewhat self-aware, another way of knowing if you're not ready, let's say you mentioned, obviously you have a lot of experience in newspapers, editorial of uh, some uh, older editor says, hey, Gary, um, you know, I, I have some key principles of how to write a great story or how to edit. And, you know, uh, are you curious at all what they are? Let's just having lunch and you say, oh, not really. Right. Uh, I know I've only been a journalist for, I don't know, two years and an editor for one. 
but I know right. everything. And so there's nothing you could possibly tell me about being a better journalist and editor. So thanks for the offer, but, but no thanks. I've got better things to do with my time. Right. That would be a good indication that you're not ready. On yep. the other hand, if they, you're in conversation and they talked about yeah, just some of their experiences, and you said, boy, I'd love to hear more about those stories that you mentioned. I'd love to hear what you've learned. You've been doing this for 30 years. Well, that would indicate maybe you're ready. So I think you're right that your interactions with others will be t very telling for you and for other people. And, yeah. you know, this is sort of a dance, almost like a marriage. So uh, you uh -huh. might think you're ready. But if prospective mentors who obviously anyone that's a good prospective mentor is going to be busy, they might say, well, yeah, you know, thanks, Gary. Thanks, work. I'm, I'm kind of busy and uh, life is pretty full. And uh, yeah, maybe another time. Uh, let, let's check back in, I don't know, two or three years. And, you know, who knows, you know, maybe a couple right. of decades and, you know, maybe it'll be a better time. But it's a dance. So, you know, your prospective mentor will also have a view on, on whether you're ready. Yeah. So, you yeah. know, there's, you think you're ready and then there's, are you really ready? You know? Yeah, <laughs> yeah for sure. Um, so I have taken your uh, seven points in most of your blogs. That's mentored me a little bit. And I, I always come into these episodes with some quotes. I have a couple quotes. I've actually picked seven. I picked seven quotes this time. <laughs> so after each point, I'm going to read a quote about mentoring because there's a lot of really good mentoring quotes out there. And, and, and uh, the first one uh, comes from Oprah Winfrey, who said this, a mentor is someone who allows you to see the hope inside yourself, which uh, mm. really, you know, that just kind of, I mean, that seems to get at the heart of what it is you're talking about, right? It helps you see the hope inside yourself, which helps, not tells you, not directs you, but helps you see. It's a collaborative process, so... Boy, that is such a good point, Gary. I love that. You know, to help you see the hope that is inside you. I think one of the things that mentors at their best, they will encourage you. They mm -hmm. will see the good that maybe you don't see. Maybe you've been beaten down by crucibles, which in the world we live in, we do live in the world of crucibles. We talk about being in the pit of despair. But um, a good mentor, they will see hope. They will see skill maybe a ray of brilliance, a ray of potential that we don't see. And right. so when we have no hope, a mentor can, that's not really telling us what to do. It's just seeing the best that is within us and calling it forth, if you will. I mean, that is, yeah. that is, so, uh, that is so important. That's probably one of the key components of being a good mentor, to be able to see the light, the brilliance, the potential in somebody. So that, that is an excellent quote. Yeah. And it, it, I'll add one more beat. Um, uh, it can last a long time. That, that insight that, that, that you're right, that they allow you to see the hope inside yourself. Um, I, I, I started out this conversation talking about how I reconnected with my old mentor, Carol Wilson. Um, uh, and, and his wife was also, you know, a friend and she popped into the conversation and said, he always said that you were, Carol always said, to her that I, I had the best journalism instincts of anyone that he'd ever managed. And I had forgotten that he said that. And I can tell you 30 years after the fact, um, even though I, I do know kind of what my skills are to hear that again, is just, you know, it's life giving. That's the power. 30 years after I was even in newspapers, I haven't been in newspapers for 20 years, 30 years after that, that that still touches you, that still moves you, that still makes you see the hope within yourself. That sort of triggered a thought that I'd forgotten. Somebody that wasn't exactly a mentor, but maybe a role model. Uh, way back when, um, before I went to college at Oxford, because Australian schools end at sort of the end of the uh, calendar year because of, you know, Southern Hemisphere and, and, you know, seasons are different. I had about, I don't know, five or six months or more in 1979, before I was due to go to college at Oxford in the fall. So I had an internship at a local advertising agency in Australia, J. Walter Thompson, which at the time was you know, one of the big global uh, forces in advertising. And there was a Canadian guy, Don Robertson, who was um, at the time the head of J. Walter Thompson in Australia. And uh, we had a sort of all hands meeting with all the different groups and our particular agency had the local uh, Kellogg's account, so Kellogg's cornflakes and what have you. And he said to the to the whole, you know, 
couple hundred people, however many were there, including the Kellogg's team. He said, you know, I'd just been chatting to uh, J. Walter Thompson Corporate and, you know, Kellogg's Corporate and, you know, Battle Creek, Michigan. And the advertising you've done for Kellogg's in Australia is some of the best advertising they've ever seen globally for the brand anywhere. And this is Australia, which is, you know, it's, right. uh, you know, um, it's a wonderful right. place, but it's not on the same scale as the US and, and some other places. So what did that do for the Kellogg group? I mean, it's like, wow, it's just that kind of encouragement and inspiration. Uh, it's never kind of left me. It's just, you know, obviously he was a, a mentor in a sense to them and he wasn't a formal mentor to me, but somebody that was clearly um, several decades into his career that clearly knew a lot about advertising to be able to say that to folks that were younger in their careers, just to help them, you know, and Oprah Winfrey's words to see the hope that's within them. That would have turbocharged their enthusiasm, their, you know, drive. That's a great, example of how this this is a resonant topic i mean we've just we hadn't talked about any of this stuff and we're talking about it so um we may be guilty of we always say content not clock dictates we the <laughs> ones that go on for three and a half hours so i'll move quickly go. here to the next beat the second point in the blog is do a readiness check so the first point is you have to be ready then you have to do a readiness check what does that checkup look like warwick a, a readiness check for for a mentor yeah it's really um, just making sure that, that we're ready, that we do a soul check. Um, we need to start from a place of humility. If we feel like I'm no, ev- I know everything. I am the greatest, you know, that sense of arrogance. Everything I do turns to gold. I was a star athlete in high school. I was, did well in college and all that just shows is, um, I'm a genius. I'm brilliant. No, I mean, then you're not ready to be helped. And even if you, have done really well in athletics and school, uh, a humble person realizes there's always another level. There's always more that we can not just achieve, but always more that we can grow as a human being and how we treat other people, friends, spouses, partners. So right. you've got to do that internal soul check. And um, you've got to realize we may know a lot of things, but there's a lot that we don't know. There's so much more that we could understand. Um, and maybe you have this sense of, you know, uh, maybe things have gone well so far, but I want to minimize the mistakes and pitfalls that can happen. I want to accelerate my growth. And if somebody can tell me, hey, if you do A or B, you'll probably land in a crucible. I would like to know what that is. Yep. If I hit a crucible, I'd like to be able to bounce back. But how about avoiding the potholes in the first place? I mean, th- that's an idea, you know. Yeah, well, yes. how about saying, okay, if you do this or that, it really is going to derail your career. So, so don't. And so it's, you know, it, it, we've got to make a, a commitment to listen. There'll be times when we hear advice that we don't want to hear. There'll be questions that'll be asked we don't want to hear. We go, so, okay, it's not all going to be, you know, uh, roses. You know, it's not all going to be Disneyland here. I'm going to be asked questions and maybe I'll hear advice that I just, it's painful. But you know what? I'm going to count the cost ahead of time. I'm going to come with uh, to this these dialogues with a sense of humility, with a sense I want to grow, avoid some pitfalls that could happen. So you've really got to do this readiness soul check. The more you you do some internal reflection, the more you'll get benefit out of uh, mentoring, and the more you'll be able to turbocharge your growth as a human being and your growth in your career. So that internal soul work. As we often say, the inner work precedes the outer work. That internal soul work, it's, it, you know, don't just brush over this. It's critical. Yeah. And <clears throat> interestingly, great lead into my second quote, because the individual who said this quote, I think, uh, did the soul work based on what his quote is. And his quote is this. Uh, it's Benjamin Franklin, who was uh, just a, a master of putting uh, great thoughts into pithy sayings. He said this. Tell me and I forget. Teach me and I may remember. Involve me and I learn. Right? That's somebody who who was ready when people involved him. Uh, He was able to then learn from that stuff. So I thought that one was uh, was was pretty uh, important. Boy, Gary, that is profound. I mean, obviously Benjamin Franklin, uh, one of the founders of our country, uh, brilliant, brilliant man. But yeah, and you can tell somebody something and 
no matter how profound it is, they don't learn that much. Yeah, you can teach right. them. But it's really the cornerstone of uh, what coaching is by asking the right questions. Um, and I guess in mentoring, involving them in that. So in mentoring, right. it could be talking to them about a principle, like it could be something that I've done over the years. Like uh, most people would agree that if you try to get 20 things done at once, it's not, you know, nothing will happen or right. it won't happen well. So a lot of folks will say, or, you know, people who are wise, what are the two or three most important things you should be doing now? And that's a better way to, to, to be. Now, you, most people will say, well, that kind of makes sense. It's kind of hard to argue with that. That's self-evident truth. So you've stated a principle. And so then, like my philosophy of mentoring would be, okay, great. So you agree with, and if, you, if they didn't agree with that, I would just move on because I'm right. not into telling people what to do. But let's say they agree to that. The obvious next question is, so tell me, what are the two or three most important things that you feel that you should be doing this week, this month, what have right. you? And if you use a coaching philosophy, that's great. When are you going to do this by? And great, let's chat in a couple of weeks. And yeah, at least from a coaching perspective. So yeah, you've stated a principle, but fleshing that out is that's where the real involvement happens. The third point of your blog, Warwick, um, and, and this really is sort of the epicenter of what we're talking about. Uh, and it's this, the right mentor matters. Seems self-evident, but unpack a little bit why it's so important, because obviously the wrong mentor is not going to help you. And you've already touched on some of the things wrong mentors do. So why is it so important? And how do you find the right mentor? Yeah. I mean, we want a, a mentor that's going to help us in the areas we want to be helped. So if you want to be helped in your career, let's say maybe you're in the military, in the Navy, the Air Force, the Army, then having somebody that's been further down that uh, track, you know, maybe it's a captain, an admiral, a major, um, that's helpful. Now, if you want to, you know, grow in your experience in the military and you end up being mentored by an architect, the architect may be a great architect, but how, if he or she has never been in the military, how can that help you grow in your career in the military right. if that's your right. stated goal? I mean, it's sort of obvious, but, um, you know, we want people with, relevant experience, or maybe it's on the family front. Maybe you're a new mother or father and you've got kids. And so picking a mentor that's further down the track than you are, you really admire their parenting and you want them to give you tips and just help you, uh, give you some advice. So, um, you know, the right kind of mentor, uh, matters. I mean, we'll get into more, you know, um, other aspects of good mentoring, right. but we need to be clear of, um, you know, it starts with, okay, well, well, why do I want to mentor in the first place? Why? What is the point? And be specific in your own mind. Well, I want to mentor because I want to grow in my career um, to the next level, or maybe, you know, I want to be more of a team player. And so the questions inform the choice. So if you said, mm -hmm. you know, I keep getting all these performance reviews that I tell everybody what to do. Nobody listens because I don't listen and I want to be a team player. I want to galvanize a team, but nobody follows me because I guess they feel like I don't listen. Okay, great. So maybe you want a mentor that is a great manager, a great leader that really listens uh, and involves his or her team. Now, in that case, maybe whether they have, whether they're in your precise career may not matter as Right. I'm looking to be mentored by somebody that's a fantastic manager that his or her team will, you know, run through a brick wall for them because they listen and evolve them. In that case, the industry isn't as important. My next quote is from Sir Isaac Newton, who said this, if I have seen further, it is by standing on the shoulders of giants. Um, again, right? Definitely Isaac Newton, read between the lines, found the right mentors if that's the way he looks at um, how he's seen further in his life, he's, he stood on the, sh the shoulders of giants. Absolutely. Um, it really comes back to humility. If you're a humble person and you have a desire to grow, you will not be intimidated by, let's say, that you're a physicist and you happen to live in the 1950s and maybe you're a student at Princeton and you find there's this guy, um, uh, Albert Einstein, who's like there, because I believe he was teaching at Princeton in the 50s. And um, 
you know, that could be a little intimidating. And let's say you yeah. were lucky enough to yes. get him to- yeah. uh, Just a little bit, yeah. <laughs> to mentor you. You could say, look, I'll never be an, an, an Albert, another Albert Einstein. And, and the probabilities is, yes, you won't be. You know, you won't be that smart. You won't have the same impact in the world. There's a very good chance that, that is true. You never know. But it's like, okay, if he, if he is willing to mentor me and, you know, I just love physics, then you should not be intimidated by the fact that this guy can run circles around you intellectually and in your field. Because if you learn just 10% of what he has to offer, that 10% could turbocharge your career by 90% because the guy is such a genius. And so don't be intimidated by being mentored by somebody that makes that may make you feel small. It's like, well, I guess not a competition to see who can be the next Albert Einstein. It's just be grateful that he's that he or she is willing to spend time with you. Learn from them. Ask them questions. Just don't be intimidated by being around somebody that you might think is light years ahead of anywhere that you'll ever be. That's okay. Just be humble enough and be willing to learn. And I'll talk later when we get to this point, I'll talk later about a mentor of mine, my, my greatest journalism mentor. He was, a, he was a Pulitzer Prize winner, which is a little bit intimidating for a young newspaper boy. Um, to, wait a minute. Right. You, won, you won a Pulitzer? Okay. So, uh, but I'll talk more about that <laughs> later. Um, the, the fourth point in the blog, which is called How to Find the Right Mentor, it's, it's available right now at beyondthecrucible.com. The fourth point is, and it, again, it's... It, what I love about this work is that you've written something that it, it things seem self-evident, but as we're talking about them, clearly they're not that self-evident, which is your instincts were great to, to, to choose this topic, because the fourth point is this, a good mentor knows more than we do. Now, seems self-evident, but you have some points in here that, that can really help us make sure that we find that person and why it's important to find that person. So unpack that for us a little bit. Yeah, I mean, we've touched on this a bit, but um, obviously, uh, we want we want to make sure that uh, a mentor knows more than we do in the field we want to uh, learn about, or the type of person we want to be. You know, maybe it's a better manager and all. Um, but uh, you know, how they do their job is important, as important as what they're actually doing. So, you know, we might have the sense that. Yeah, we want to be successful, but we want to do things the right way. We want to do it ethically. We don't want to cut legal or ethical corners. We want to treat people well. We want to um, grow in our profession, and we want to, you know, be around people of similar values. Uh, you want to have an impact in the world in a positive way. So, you know, they'll know more than we do, not just in their profession, but there's a part of them that just how they live their lives, how they. Right, treat people, right. how they do their jobs. We just admire that. Maybe there's somebody that even when things are going well, uh, things are not going well at work, it's like, okay, we've had a bad quarter, things are poor, but, uh, you know, may, there maybe there are some things we can learn from this. You know, they have a sense of optimism, you know, tomorrow will be a better day. Okay, how can mm -hmm. we increase things 2%, 3%, even though the market's against us, the competition is doing well? They just have this can-do uh, mindset. They're entrepreneurial. They're willing to take risks, you know, manageable risks. Uh, you know, they don't browbeat people. They encourage them to take risks. I mean, there, there might be a whole slew of characteristics that we admire about that person, and they know more about our, than us, not just in their profession, but they know more than we do in areas that we want to know more about, about character, ethics, uh, risk taking, entrepreneurialism, how to treat people well. Like, there's a whole slew of characteristics that right. may be important to us. And the greatest example of this in my life that I can, you know, think about where it, it lines up perfectly is AA. Um, as we've talked about on the show before, um, uh, I, I, I have an alcoholic past. Um, and in, in AA, um, what's great about that is, you know, you get a sponsor. That's what helps you through it. You, you find someone who will sponsor you. That's, AA speak for a mentor, someone who will help you in your uh, first, you know, your nascent steps out of out of being an alcoholic into sobriety. But they there's there's a there's a limit. I mean, there's a there's a requirement. They must be sober at least a year. Um, there's got to be somebody right who knows more than you do about walking the walk of sobriety. And that was 
um, you know, uh, sure, I could have plugged in there and found someone I thought was maybe cool. I mean, my my AA sponsor was a was an elderly man, um, probably like my age now. Isn't that funny? Twenty seven years sober uh, next month, but um, you know, he was a, he, a, a and it was in Texas, and he was the salt of the earth Texas type, and I probably wouldn't have picked him out if I had the freedom to pick someone who was maybe more like me who hadn't had as much sobriety. But Ronnie, that was his name. Ronnie uh, was 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 critical in those first days of of my sobriety. So he was definitely a mentor sponsor. He was definitely a mentor to me on what it what it means to sort of begin that life of sobriety for sure. Yeah, I mean, you raise a couple of interesting points. Somebody that's been further down the track than you, which is critical. But sometimes we think with mentors, oh, they have to like the same things, the same sports teams, the same activities. Maybe they're outgoing like we are, or introverted like we are, or whatever it is. And you know that is really overrated. It's really not that. It's like picking people on your team. I mean, wouldn't it be dumb and boring if everybody in your team looked like you, liked the same sports teams, was outgoing, introverted? whatever it was, you know, like the same book to watch the same TV shows. I mean, that would be just, well, it'd be stupid, but it'd be boring. You know, D- diversity of, of people and, and experiences uh, matters. So, it matters less as to whether you just click with the mentor. You don't want to, you know, hate each other, but you want to feel like it doesn't matter whether they're older. Well, obviously, typically they're going to be somewhat older because you want them to have more experience. I mean, not normally, but it doesn't matter whether you just click. It's more, do you admire them? Is there mm. something about them Excellent that you can point. learn? Yep. That's really what matters rather than, you know, would you go have a beer with them? Right. That's not really that relevant. Right. And especially it's, not in know. AA. In AA, I wouldn't have gone <laughs> Well, well, well said. That would be a good sign. <laughs> yeah. If, if, if an yeah. AA person yeah. says, Hey, look, let's start our first session yeah. at the, at not the a- local uh, bar and we'll have a beer together. You probably know that's not a good mentor, right? It's, yes. it's a telltale yes, sign. Yeah. Indeed. <laughs> Yeah, I mean that that's a good point. Um that uh that 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 perspective of yours is great. You don't have to be, you know, if everybody was the same, if everybody was exactly like you, um life would be uh grayer. I mean, uh, you know, imagine Warwick and I'll ask the listeners and viewers to imagine this too. Imagine if you and I were exactly the same personality-wise. This show <laughs> I w- I think wouldn't be as interesting as it is no, because it, different no, perspectives. It, it would be pretty boring. So the fact that we are different, uh, differences can really complement each other. Uh, right. I believe they do with that podcast, which again, I feel blessed. Uh, all right. Here's my, here's my, and I, I don't, I'm going to guess that you may not have a, have a, have anything to say about this, <laughs> but only because it's a little bit of a repeat from what I said before, but this is a, from a, a man named Bob Goshen. And he said this, a mentor mm-hmm. is someone who sees more talent and ability within you than you see in yourself and helps bring it out of you. So um, he, he not only sees it, but he then he or she helps bring it out of you, which I think is a is uh, a is a great point. Yeah, I'm afraid it's another excellent quote. So you're, Good, you're doing yeah, very keep well. Going. Yeah, keep going. <laughs> so um, yeah, I mean, a great mentor they see more potential in you than you see in yourself. And you know, so often we you know we hear stories of folks um, that have been you know. Uh, in challenging situations. And um, yeah, I think of maybe Senator Tim Scott in, in South Carolina. Um, mm, I think he had a yeah. pretty challenging upbringing. And I forget if the, I think the guy was a, a business guy and something was very different than him, but somehow he saw potential in him that Tim didn't see in himself. And I think he would credit a lot of his success in life to that mentor that was very different, very different upbringing, but he saw potential in Tim that he didn't see in himself. Absolutely. Uh, all right. Point five in the blog, how to find the right mentor at beyondthecrucible.com is this. A great mentor is a great listener and asks great questions. And again, we've, we've nibbled on the edges of that as we've gone through this, right? To, to get to this point, they're not necessarily people who are telling you what to do. They're asking questions to help you figure out what to do. So talk a little bit more about that because I know not only as someone uh, as as someone who's interested in mentorship but also as a coach this this one's really important to you. 
Yeah, this may be one of, if not the cornerstone of, you know, what it uh, takes to be a good mentor. A great mentor is going to be a great listener and ask great questions. They won't really, they won't tell us what to do. They won't give us a roadmap. Um, they won't say, hey, this is how I became successful in my career or my marriage or my life and do these things. If you don't do these things, you're an idiot. So, you know, let's go. Um, a great mentor will ask great questions. They'll want to know what our goals are, what our values yes. are, what our hopes and dreams, uh, what legacy we want to leave. I mean, that's really the, you know, the highlight of a good mentor is they'll ask great questions. And if they do happen to give advice, it won't be on specifics. It'll be more on principles. What you just said there about the things that they do, quote unquote, tell you, um, are, are more inspirational than, than even directional, right? It's, 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 it's their, um, it, in many ways, it's their 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 slogan for the way that they do the job. And I go back, boy, Carol, I'm going to owe you something for this. Carol <laughs> Wilson, my old journalism mentor, uh, a mentor at the Wichita Falls Times Record News, Carol said something, I still remember it. Uh, um, it just popped in my head. He said the way that he ran the newspaper, the way that he's, he looked at, at, at gathering news was if if there's a choice between getting the story first or getting the story right, I always want to get the story right. And that served me so well in the rest of, of my career. It wasn't just about beating the TV. It wasn't just about beating somebody else. It wasn't about the scoop. It was about the accurate conveyance of information. Um, and that was just one of the little dollop, you know, dollops of wisdom that he dropped on me uh, under his uh, mentorship. So what you've just indicated is a tremendous example of a principle to live by right. in the profession of journalism. So I don't have the same level of experience that you do, but having grown up in newspaper background, obviously I have some thoughts on the subject and I would agree a thousand percent with Kara Wilson. Yeah. Uh, I think it's really a good journalist wants to get it right. A bad journalist wants to be first. Right. Ideally you, you want both because you know, you always want to get the scoop in, but it's easy to cut corners. And that to me is, and you would know more than I do, that separates the good from the bad journalist, at least certainly one key indicated. Do you want to get it right, or do you want to be first? And yep. you, you'll be thinking to yourself, there's a right answer here. You know? Right. And, and if they offer the wrong answer, <clears throat> and you're an editor, you might be, you know what, maybe I'll select the other candidate. <laughs> right. Because <laughs> we're not a good fit. <laughs> right. And there's a right action, too. I, I can remember times when I still worked for Carol and when I moved on to other places, I can remember times when that situation was before me. Hey, we've got the first, you know, crack at this story. No one else has it, but do we have it nailed? Do we have it accurate? And I learned to go, oh, it's not as important to get the scoop as it is as it is to get the story right. So here's my quote for point number five. Uh, and that is this uh, from Lucia Ballas Trainer. I don't know who she is or he is, but he or she said this, the mediocre mentor tells, the good mentor explains, the superior mentor a mentor demonstrates the greatest mentors inspire. I think that's what you were just talking about when it comes to leaving direction. They inspire. That's what that that bit is, right? Absolutely. So well said. Yeah. I mean, uh, the greatest mentor they will inspire, they certainly won't tell. And it, to me, inspiration comes from, yes, the example of their life, uh, but just the hope that they give uh, to us. Right. And, you know, so many examples of the greatest mentors, they will inspire and they will see greatness um, within us. I think we all have that potential within us, but they will call it forth. Mm -hmm. uh, they will help speak it into being. So, yeah. yeah, very well said. Point number six, folks, is this. A great mentor will make us do the work. I uh, I didn't edit this when we were going through the blog, but I would add maybe they will make us do the work for sure, but they will allow us to do the work as well. They, they won't do it for us. And, and sometimes that's, yep, you have to do it so you learn, but you can do it because as they've mentored you, you can do it because you're capable. I think that's part of the equation too. But unpack that a little bit for folks, Warwick. Yeah. You know, a great mentor will realize um, it's our life. Mm -hmm. They can't make us grow. They can't make us make what they might think are, are good decisions like 
Life is about helping others. It's about a life of significance, other focused, purpose driven. It's about leaving a legacy. It's about making the world a better place. It might have a series of values, and that may not be us. And obviously, at an extreme, or maybe even less than an extreme, maybe that's not a good fit. But ultimately, even if we say all the right things, oh, I want to leave a mark, I want to leave a legacy, and they say, great, hey, let's meet in a couple weeks or maybe in a month and let's just catch up on what's happening. Month after month goes by and we say all the right things, but we're doing nothing. We're not making right. even a s- small baby step towards advancing in our career, advancing in our relationships with others, advancing in how we treat others. If anything, we give example after example of where we've fallen off the wagon, if you will. It's like, ah, yeah, I yelled at that person. I yelled at my spouse. And yeah, yeah, I tell everybody what to do. I didn't listen. And I didn't listen. And month after month, week after week, you keep telling stories of where you fell short without any hope or good news of moving forward. Basically, it's really up to us. A great mentor, they will make us do the work. They might give us principles, I might offer us advice in that broad sense of the word, but ultimately they'll realize, you know, it's not up to them to give us a big report, um, you know, roadmap. It's it's up to us. And they'll realize they're there to help us. They are not responsible for turning around our lives, our careers, our marriages. They're a resource, but ultimately it's up to us and they'll realize that. And, you know, it's not easy To do that, especially when things aren't going well, it's not easy to kind of say, you know what, I can't fix this person. I can give them advice. I can ask them questions, but ultimately it's their lives. Uh, You know, and when you really care about people, that that's tough. But um, a great mentor will say, you know what, I'm here to help, but ultimately responsibility for their lives and careers, it's theirs. Yep. And they'll stay in their lane. And yeah, it's, not easy to do, but a great mentor will do that. They'll, as you say, they will allow us to do the work. It's a, it's yeah. a very good way of putting it. And I mentioned earlier my uh, old journalism mentor, who was uh, a Pulitzer Prize winner, um, Jim Bishop is his name, the late Jim Bishop, uh, who I had the honor of eulogizing when he passed away um, uh, several years ago. But uh, one of the things that he did that he permitted me to do, that he allowed me to do, that he made me do is in the in the in the daily news meeting when I was managing editor and he was the editor, um, I got to pick. He allowed me to pick what stories went on the front page, and you know he didn't tell me what stories he t- to put there. He didn't you know he didn't correct me if I you know he he let me do it, uh, and I learned. I learned from that, and I carried that forth in in my career. He was a he was a great mentor in the sense that when I succeeded, he applauded me. Um, and when I failed or, and fell short, he didn't so much as correct me as he equipped me to not do that again. Uh, he 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 took those as not chances to chew me out, but chances to grow me. And I think that is one of the things that made him such a uh, one of myriad things that made him um, such a great mentor uh, to me in the journalism career. I love that phrase that Jim Bishop mentioned: "Is equip, not correct." Correct feels like you're being, you know, uh, taken to the woodshed and right, scolded exactly. by the teacher. You know, it's right. not it's not always helpful. Equip is more helping you understand how to do it better next time. It's uh, Marshall Goldsmith, who's a very uh, prominent executive coach, uses this phrase "feed forward, not feedback," and I love that Ooh, phrase. That is okay, great. It's, it's not so much looking back as okay. Let's talk about feed forward. Let's talk about you know, how can we do things better next time? How can we take things to the next level? What are the things we can do? And so it might feel like it's similar, but the way it comes across to the person is very, very different. And I would say, obviously, I don't know him, but that sounds like the Jim Bishop philosophy. It's more feed forward than feedback, equip rather than correct. Again, you know, really useful things to think of uh, for prospective mentors. Uh, We can learn a lot from that that story. All right, here we go. Quote number seven, Warwick. For the seventh point in your blog is this from Samuel Taylor Coleridge, the uh, the poet. He said this: "Advice is like snow; the softer it falls, the longer it dwells upon, and the deeper it sinks into the mind." 
the softer it falls, the deeper it dwells upon, the longer it dwells upon, and the deeper it sinks into the mind. That just describes what you've been talking about, right? Absolutely. I think what it'd say is snow, soft snow, you know, just coming down is a lot better than, uh, you know, huge hailstones, right? <laughs> right, right. <laughs> yep. So uh, use light snow, not hailstones. So basically, you know, people are fragile. Even the people that say they're not fragile, all human beings are fragile, at least in the sense, I don't mean weak, but it's more, you know, uh, we all have insecurities. We have things we're sensitive about. We have areas of fragility. And so when you're trying to improve, trying to grow, if somebody comes down with a two before and says, boy, that was hopeless, man, you really blew it there. Boy, that was so dumb. I mean, yeah, can you imagine Carol Wilson or Jim Bishop saying to you, Gary, I mean, that's one of the worst stories I've ever seen. That That's just a joke. Right. I mean, really, right, exactly. go back to primary school. You know, uh, <laughs> have you thought right. of teaching math? Because clearly your command of the English language is, is, is horrendous and uh, you can't spell yep. and just go on and on and on. Whether it's true or not, if you respect them, you know, you'll be focused less on if it's true. And I can't believe my mentor who I'm, you know, believe in said that about me. I mean, that's just not helpful, but just a light touch. Again, it's more feed forward. Okay. Hey, that, you know, that was not bad, but you know, some of the things maybe to think of just as we move forward is if we do this or that and don't lay it all out at once. Right. You know, okay, here are these 30 things that you can improve on. Pick <laughs> one or two. Okay. Because yep. for most frail human beings, we're all frail to a degree. And I hope listening, you understand what I mean by that. We can handle one or two or maybe three corrections, not 30. Okay. Right. Just be patient. It, yep. It's a marathon, not a sprint. So, you know, trust the process, trust the person you're trying to mentor and just don't lay it all on them with a two before. Just just be gentle and pick one or two and be be careful how you mentor it. Do it with a velvet glove rather than rather than a hammer, you know. With, with softly falling snow. <laughs> exactly um, right. We are about to get to the seventh point in your blog, the final point. But as, uh, before we do that, let's revisit the first six about um, how to find the right mentor. First point is we have to be ready. Second point is to do a readiness check. Third point is the right mentor matters. Fourth, a good mentor knows more than we do. Five, a great mentor is a great listener and asks great questions. And six is a great mentor will make us do the work. I added an addendum, will allow us to do the work in some cases as well. Make us and allow us. And I love Warwick how in the in the seven points that you have here you alternate between great mentor and good mentor because um, uh, you know it's 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 if if we aim to find great first maybe we don't find good in other words right we if we start at a right. certain level we look for people that we can that we can relate to the people that know more than us uh, so I think you know uh, the way that that mentorship works. You probably start out in a place where someone's a good mentor, they grow into a great mentor. Um, but um, uh, the important point that you make at point seven is this, a good mentor will share our values. That's an interesting point to end on. And why is that so important after? Because it, it seems like it's not necessarily about right what they do for us um, in the sense that they're going to ask questions rather than tell us what to do. They're going to make us do the work. They're going to allow us to do the work. Now we're talking about something that's inside, that's internal. Um, a good mentor will share our values. Why is that so important that you made the last point of the blog that? Yeah, it's an interesting question. Uh, the internal, the how we do things to me is as if not important than the, the specifics of our career or the what that we're doing. And so you want to feel like um, that you're with somebody that. Um, Yes, you want them to be encouraging and affirming. Just the examples that you mentioned of your mentors uh, had that that's absolutely f uh, critical. You want them to push us forward in a gentle way, as you said, you know, like uh, soft falling uh, snow, not right. hailstorm, not two before. So you want that gentle nudges um, and, you know, to help us achieve the goals that we care about. But, you know, values matter. If we want to be a humble servant leader and you're around a, a take charge, um, arrogant person that's all about power and money, I mean, how in the world are they going to ask you the right question? How in the world right. are they going to be able to give you good advice? 
they won't. Now, obviously, we here at Beyond the Crucible, we feel like, from our perspective, humility, uh, life is not about you. It's um, you can have a fulfilling life, but life is life is significant. So, life on purpose, focus on others. We have a perspective, uh, and so if you're in the Beyond the Crucible circle, there'll be a set of values. It doesn't mean you have to believe everything we believe, but there are some things that we believe for. Uh, a good and fulfilling life, a sense of humility uh, and integrity is important. So whatever your values are, values matter. And so you want a mentor that will help you um, become the person that you want to be. And so, you know, maybe um, their exact goals may be uh, not the same, but the overarching goals about legacy and contribution and making the world a better place, those over overarching goals and values such as humility and integrity and servant leadership, it will really help if they have that same perspective because you want to encourage, you want them to encourage you to call forth your best self. Right. Well, how in the world can they call forth your best self if they don't even know what it is they're looking for? If right. they're on a completely different page. So for them to exhort you, you want that right kind of mentor that has the right kind of values. I just realized as I didn't realize until I read it right now, the point seven, a good mentor will share your our values. You know, if you change one letter in that, I think it's also true. A good mentor will shape our values. But yeah, and I think the the nuance is um, you want to make sure that they're shaping your values in an area that you want to be shaped by. You know? Right. So it's like, you know, you know you want to do things the right way, ethically, morally. You know you want to be, like in your case, a good journalist. Mm -hmm. You're not completely sure about what it means to be a good journalist. You know, let's go back 30 years. You're not quite sure about what does it mean to do it the right way in the newspaper business. You know, a good mentor will help shape your values in the sense of crystallize what it means to do it the right way, uh, you know, with integrity and humility. Um, but you're starting from a common starting point and they're shaping your values in, a, in, in the way that you want it to be shaped, if you will, if that makes sense. Yeah. Oh, for sure. All right. Here's the seventh, here's the seventh quote. And the seventh quote, uh, I, I picked a sort of a summary for the whole discussion. Um, uh, and that is, is this, it's from Steven Spielberg. And Steven Spielberg said this uh, about mentoring in general, which I think is a nice ribbon to put on this package um, as we begin to begin our descent into uh, landing the plane here. He said this, the delicate balance of mentoring someone is not creating them in your own image, but giving them the opportunity to create themselves. That seems like, you know, drop the mic, right? I don't want to drop this one because it's, you know, it's, it's expensive, but, but that's, that's kind of a mic drop moment, right? It's, 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 it's not creating right. them in your own image, but giving them the opportunity to, to create themselves. That's what good mentors do, right? Yeah. Because you've got to leave your ego at the door. Even S Steven Spielberg, as successful as he is, you know, maybe he has a young filmmaker and it's not saying, okay, great to be successful. You got to make, you know, uh, Raiders of the Lost Ark and, you know, Jaws and all the incredible things that he's done. And, you know, you got to make action movies. You got to, you know, tell stories the way I tell them. It'd be like a composer saying that, you know, it's just, you know, it's not about making a carbon copy of yourself as a mentor. It's about helping them be the best version of themselves, about following their own dreams, their own path, their own way of fleshing out their own, you know, greatness, if you will. So uh, we, we've wrapped the seven points of the blog. Um, and as always, you, you have sort of a summary statement at the bottom uh, of the blog. I underlined um, three key points in there that I think summarize your summary. Uh, and that's, that's this. Um, so finding right a good mentor um, is not a cure-all. That's one sentence you wrote. Ultimately, we need to take ownership of our lives. No one else is responsible for this. Why does that summarize uh, so well um, this conversation we've had about uh, how to find a, a, a good slash great mentor and why it's so important? You know, mentors are there to assist us, to help us, not to fix us. Yeah. Mentors aren't going to solve all of our problems. 
we're ultimately responsible for our own lives. Metals can catalyze our growth in our careers, as human beings, in our relationships, marriages, with partners. Um, mentors can be very helpful. Right. And, and when we do find the right mentor or mentors, um, as I've talked about th throughout this episode, it, there's stickability to it. I mean, I still have Warwick in my office. I'm in my home office now, but I still have in my office office um, a a a beautiful piece of art that Jim Bishop gave me when I left um, the paper that I worked at for him in Victoria, Texas, to take over as editor of another paper in Nebraska. And what it is, it's a it's a it's a it's a painting of of a of an eagle being pushed out of the nest by his mother. And the, the, the headline on the, on the picture is even eagles need a push. And what he was trying to tell me was mm. you're an eagle, young man. You're, you've, you've learned well, um, uh, sort of like Yoda to Luke Skywalker, right? You've mm. learned well, and now it's time for me to push you out of the nest so that you can go out and continue your career. And that, you know, again, to this day, uh, means everything to me. So the, the, the value of, of the right mentor that you're talking about in this blog can have lifelong, um, not only lifelong consequences, lifelong uh, um, uh, meaning for you, but it can it can inspire you. And I've mentored many people. It can inspire you to do the same thing. I think, right? Is that that's a fair statement? Absolutely. Right? And I think to use the analogy that you used before, it's a gentle nudge. It's like falling snowflakes. Right. It's not like yep. hail or two before. So it's not like getting bashed out of the uh, out of the nest <laughs> with a two before. You know. Right. It's like, you know, hurtling, you know, thousands of feet down from the top of Mount Everest or something. I mean, it's just, it's, they know when you're ready and, yep. you know, the mentoring maybe will, will change or take a different form, but it's, um, yeah, it's just, but they are, they want, they want the best for us. That is that gentle nudge, the gentle push forward to help us get to the next level. And, and that can be very helpful. It could be yep. life-changing. For sure. Speaking of things that can be very helpful, folks. <laughs> Warwick always ends his blogs with questions for reflection. So let's talk about the three that we have here. Um, question one, uh, are, we, are we ready? Have we done a readiness check to ensure that we are truly prepared to get the most out of our time with a mentor? That's the starting blocks right there. Those are the starting blocks. The second point of reflection, what do we want a mentor for? Is it to grow in our profession or our personal lives? Be clear about that. And recognize, as Warwick has talked about here, that sometimes you can cross lanes, right? Sometimes the it's not just, you know, you've got five mentors who all have the same career that you're in or the same life situation you're in. You can get some cross currents of great mentorial advice. And then the third question for reflection is to identify the key values that are important to us and that we feel must be important to a prospective mentor, uh, to Warwick's point. You want to make sure that you're not aligning yourself as a mentor uh, with a mentor that that has values that are that are much different from yours, or who has values that you just wouldn't want to have be your values. Um, all great questions to ask yourself. So Warwick, we'll we'll end uh, on this point, and that is, what's the what's the takeaway? Right, we've been talking about newspapers a lot. So what's the headline that you want people to take <laughs> out of that you want listeners and viewers to take out of our conversation today? It's probably the right mentor matters. You know, find the one with values and overarching principles and broad goals in life about legacy and contribution and life significance. Find one with the right values and overarching principles and overarching goals that you have. And then be willing to listen. You know, hopefully they'll ask you great questions. Go in it with an attitude of, of humility. I'm here to grow. There's a good you know, a person who is really secure and self-confident will want to learn and grow. The insecure are the know-it-alls. The ones who are secure, that I know I don't know everything. There's always more to learn and there's always more to grow and be as a human being. So find the right mentor and be ready to uh, be able to utilize the great benefits that a great mentor has to offer by being in that right place, being in a coming from a spirit of hunger to learn uh, and just spirit of humility. 
that brings the plane in for a landing. Um, uh, really, really insightful conversation, uh, Warwick. And the the uh, right. Please hear this, listener. In addition to everything that we talked about, lay it over the crucible experiences that you've been through. Lay it over the crucibles. I mean, we didn't explicitly call that out really here, but it's kind of like if you're listening to a to a podcast called Beyond the Crucible, the subjects are going to be about crucibles, and we just sort of, you know, all of these things will help you. These are people who will help you get beyond your crucible when you find the right mentor. Those will be things that will help you on that journey. So folks, until the next time we are together, which will be just one week from today, um, please remember, we know that crucible experiences are hard. We know that we need help to get through them. And, but as we always say, if you learn the lessons from them, they don't have to be the worst day of your life or, or, or the end of your story. Uh, and one of the ways that you can learn those lessons is to, is to find a good mentor who can help you along the journey that you're going to walk after your crucible experience, because together with someone who's, who's on your side, helping you, um, asking you the right questions, giving you soft drops of snow, right, to help you get there, uh, you'll end up at the best destination you could possibly end up, and that is at a life of significance. If you enjoyed this episode, learned something from it, we invite you to engage more deeply with those of us at Beyond the Crucible. Visit our website, beyondthecrucible.com, to explore a plethora of offerings to help you transform what's been broken into breakthrough. A great place to start? Our free online assessment, which will help you pinpoint where you are on your journey beyond your crucible and to chart a course forward. See you next week.